so we're going to have uh, now the uh, next talk, uh, application of meta surfaces for the design of multifunctional devices in combination with 2D crystals and molecular compounds. The talk is going to be presented by Dr. Joseph uh, Canet Ferrer, senior researcher in the Institute of Molecular Science um, at the University of Valencia. Thank you very much for, for attending today. Uh, the floor is yours, uh, Dr. Canet. Okay, so thank you, thank you for the nice introduction. Thank you also the organization for giving me give me the opportunity to, to 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 stay here today and show you a bit what kind of research are we doing here at the University of Valencia. So basically, what I'm going to to try to explain today is how can we improve the the functionality of on meta surfaces by the combination with other components yeah but first let me just explain you the place we are working so we, we uh, maybe you know Valencia it's it's a city located in in this in this side of Spain so we are now because of a big festival we have in the spring when we make a huge monuments made of wood and cartoon and then we just burn it yeah it's the funny thing so indeed we like a lot to bar things also we like fireworks and and uh, we also well know because uh, if you want to have the proper paella you, you need to visit us and also because of the oranges and the orchata so <laughs> yeah it's a very definitely it's a very uh, a very nice place to, to to have a vacation but we are also good in science so here at the at the scientific park we have a, a chemistry institute which is in the, the top four in Spain and we get an important amount uh, 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 an important budget for, for regional and European uh, uh, governments and uh, these are good figures if you consider that our institute is a little institute uh, with less than 150 researchers so. And what I'm doing there, so I'm a physicist doing material science with chemists. So basically, uh, the institute has a, a big tradition in the synthesis of molecular materials. So this, for me, is the input. And more recently, the, 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 the institute has built new facilities for the study of physical properties and analyses. As, as a physicist, I have been in charge of the pre-installation and also the purchasing of this of this kind of facilities. So I mean, yeah, it's it's not uh, scientific research at the at the end, but it's <laughs> and also it's it's convenient if you if you for for your later research. So also recently, I get a, a little budget for for leading and a small group with three PhDs for doing. Uh, this uh, developing this kind of multifunctional meta surfaces, but okay. So meta surfaces are working fine, are very nice devices. But what what should be interested on improving functionality in, in in a material in a technology that is working so well? So in principle, of course, it's because of the fundamentals. We are interested on getting to know on discovering the light matter interaction in the nanoscale, right? But also there are some technological reasons. So just think about semiconductor in industry. Every time they have to scale down the process, they should reinvent all the technology. This is what is happening right now. It is applies for uh, silicon electronics, but also for silicon photonics. So in, indeed, in the short term, a solution for a solution for uh, or alternative to miniaturization is to combine both, combine the, the, the properties of communication of silicon photonics, which are able to manage data very fast, with the comp computation capabilities of silicon electronics, which still is more efficient. So you can find some proposals like vertical stacks or multi-layers where data are introduced in series and, and they are processed in parallel, right? And in this context, I believe that material science has something to say. In particular, the key point in this that in this that of the, in this kind of devices is the connection, the coupling between the electronic and the photonic constituent. So we can provide or develop heterostructures when you combine a material with good transport properties with a material with photonic properties. You can do also composites 
And from, from our institute, we want to explore what we call the supramolecular approach. Yeah. So let me explain this chemical approach from a physical point of view. Imagine that you have a bunch of materials, a bunch of elements or compounds, and you want to combine them uh, at your will. So in principle, this is possible. It happens in nature, and the only limit is the energy that you need to invert for getting the order, right? So if you think in little molecules instead of in a big crystal, and when I speak about little molecules, still I am speaking about more than 200 atoms, right? You can, you can get good solutions. You can more or less design the molecule at your will and get very, very well-defined physical properties. The problem is that when you put this material on a surface, the physical properties changes. Sometimes it's because of the molecule-molecule interaction, and other times it's because of the interaction with the environment. So an easy approach for, for, this, for this problem or for, for uh, uh, um, let's say, something more friendly for, for thinking about nanofabrication is to use what we call hybrid architecture. In a hybrid architecture, you preserve the nature of each constituent, still this compound of this element doesn't change chemically, but they are interconnected in an intelligent way. So you can make them to operate in a synergic manner. So, and this probably is more friendly thinking about the design of devices, yeah? So let me show you a couple of examples. This is a, supra a supramolecular approach. In this case, we have um, aluminescent Ethereum ion here is hard to is, is hard to find because it is surrounded because with an organic uh, an organic ligand and because of this organic ligand has a non-null net, net spin can get magnetic order when it's forming a crystal so you can get a, 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 a magnet which which is uh, which contains some uh, luminescent ions in a strategical points so you can change the, the shape of the crystal, the ligand, the solvent, whatever. And this way you can also control more or less the magnetic and the optical properties. The problem of this kind of approaches is that the optical and the magnetic constituents are not talking each other. And just in very specific situation, you can, you can uh, control magnetic things with, with light or the other way around. Uh, definitely, it's more easy if we think in a hybrid architecture. For example, imagine that you can synthesize, and we are very, very good synthesizing this kind of materials. For example, a semiconductor decalcogenide, which is luminescent, and we are also very good decorating them. So you can bond um, a molecular magnet, in this case, uh, spring cross crossover nanoparticles, to, to, to this material. The difference is that in this case of the spring crossover materials, the phase change, I mean, this is a material that changes from a low to a high spin with temperature or with light in, in principle with external stimuli. And this change is always accompanied with a, with a change in volume. And because of the covalent bonding between the, the nanoparticles and the, and the, and the decalcogenide, the change in volume produces an strain in the decalcogenide. So this way you can tune the, the gap of the of the decalcogenide with with light irradiation and this is probably this is more interesting for the design of optoelectronic devices so thinking this idea in mind today i'm going to show three examples of reconfigurable meta surfaces uh, this corresponds to my previous work I did in ICFO, yeah? And, uh, well, I will discuss or I will give some insights about how to improve the, the, the functionality of these uh, successful appro uh, approaches already published with the use of combination with molecular components. So these are the examples. We can start for the, phase, for, for the case of phase change materials. Phase change materials are very convenient for tuning metal surfaces, just Think about GST, which is a semiconductor that changes, uh, presents a, a huge contrast in the reflective index when changes from an amorphous to a crystalline phase. And this can be done in, in temperature and sometimes it's kind of reversible. So uh, we wanted to combine this in graphene because we were at TICFO and it was quite, quite in fashion in, 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 this, in this area, in this time. And we wanted to use this graphene plasmons in order to, to, to improve sensi 
activity of vibrational modes in, in, uh, in, in characterization of molecules, sensing, and so on. So we made some simulations, and as you see, you and G, do, do, playing with GST, the tuning was not was not very good, was not as expected. So we, we put this the, a model containing these graphene ribbons, the GST, a bunch of metals, and a bunch of di dielectrics in a genetic algorithm, and this was the output. Yeah, for for the the the, the answer wa was that for improving tunability the best thing was getting getting right of the graphene so i was very proud i believe is the first time in my life that something works better with the graphene and probably because of that we pay a bit more of interest on this and we could get perfect absorbers and also this very nice tunability on on on, on fabric resonators that i believe i mean this is not a big word but i believe that it illustrates the cap capabilities of tuning of the phase chase materials. So, but again, GST is a very good material. It's hard to, to compete, in, but in, in, unbeatable in the range of, of the near infrared and the visible. So we just look in literature, how we can use our, our magnetic components to improve that. And we found this material in literature, which is also a phase chase material that present this absorption in the in the uv and we believe that it's kind of fine because we can exploit this for quenching or for broadening a, a, a metasulfate resonance in the uv which are more or less also in fashion right now so we decided to to go for this kind of approach so we found similar material in house also this is a material that was extensively used for molecular in, uh, uh, spintronics in form of nanoparticles, but it presented a problem. The problem is that because of the magnetic response of this material is very low, it cannot be characterized magnetically when you grow a thin film. You need to, you need, let's say that you need milligrams of materials to get a magnetic signal. However, when you put, when we when we prepare a film and we put in the cryo, we, we, we measure, we monitor transmissivity as a function of temperature, and we could observe uh, a nice contrast in, in transmissivity uh, at the temperature that is expected to, 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 to see the phase transition in powder. So it was a good starting point. But the film presents some problems related with the quality of the surface. So we decided to study the transition with, with, with more accuracy. And after some trials, what we, what we observe is an, a slow transition when, when, when cooling down and, the, and in contrast, an abrupt transition when, when warming up. And also we observe that after uh, uh, in the warming up rub, you, we get some kind of roughness, uh, some kind of grainy structures in the surface that are accompanied by these, these jumps in the, in the transmissivity signal. So what was going to happen in there? So we spent a bit more of time. We measured similar samples, and basically we understood that what happens is that is a recrystallization problem because of the change in volume of this material. It, 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 it's it's important when when it's very big when 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 doing the phase transition. Uh, what happened is that the material needs some time for accommodate again uh, to the surface when when you are doing the cooling down ramp. But when you are war warming up, you have extra, let's say, uh, you are injecting thermal energy on the system, and the system can take this this energy to accommodate accommodate and take again the surface the surface in a conformal way. But still. We discovered that after as, after a few rams, the material is getting better and better with the surface. So you can you, we can improve the the, the quality of, of of the surface, and also we get kind of reproducibility and transmissivity after some rams. So we are still thinking about the possibility of using these materials. But to be honest, this is not the best material, the best situation for 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 making optics, right? So what we found that is interesting is for the community 
of, of spin crossover materials is to observe this transition. I mean, for spintronics, it's very nice if we are able to do thin films and we are going to observe how the material is changing from one state to the other one, but this cannot be measured magnetically. However, we can, we are thinking now about design of meta surfaces for which are very sens sensitive to the reflective index contrast, so we can monitor this transition. So at the end of the day, we are playing the other way around. We are not fabricating meta surfaces, we are using meta surfaces to characterize these materials. But still, because of, we, are, we are also studying this dryness structure with more detail and, and we believe that we are able to pattern crystals, uh, small crystals, but big enough for making a device which can behave, which can make the transition without, uh, without these scratches and these grinding structures. And we are also going, uh, also going to work in this direction. So I don't know who are we, I, I don't know if I spend too much time on this. So I will jump quickly for the next example. So this is the electrical gating of, of 2D metals. I mean, it was idea that surprised that, that surprised me very much with, when when I started to work on this process. So to make the short story, the, the long story short, I mean, when you grow uh, usually when you grow gold on a on a surface, typically you need an additional layer to avoid this kind of of uh, percolation problem, right? But uh, finally, we, 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 we get the way to, to get thin films of gold. And also we demonstrated that, this, that these films can, are very good supporting plasmons, right? So we studied the dispersion relation of these plasmons and they look, I mean, uh, let's say it's just, um, they are different in the sense that they are far from the corner of light or farther than, than expected for, for regular gold uh, plasmons. And I don't know, so the details are mostly in this, in this paper done, done under supervision of, of, of Professor Garcia de Abajo and Valerio Pruneri. And uh, what I think is relevant to tell you here today is the things that are not told, told in the paper. I mean, we could gate, we could tune this metal plasmons electrically, which is, it's, I mean, it, it was a big challenge, but we used, we did, we did that using the ion gel technique, which presents high capacity effects, low, it means that you are, you are not allowed to work with, with high operation rates, it presents some hysteresis because of the problems on the charge diffusion and so on, right? So maybe it's interesting to combine this approach of, of, of gating metals, but instead of using the ion gel, we can use this spin crossover compound that we have also in-house and that we have already demonstrated that a uh, can dop uh, graphene, uh, the doping is reversible and that can, can be used, for example, for, for uh, just for tuning the, 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 the mobility of, of graphene, right? So also recently we found this paper, which is, is not ours, but is using a similar material when the authors de demonstrated that this kind of compounds can present a, a contrast in, in, in transmissivity, uh, an ultra fast uh, contrast, and also can be used to operate in, in, in the megahertz. So, I mean, these are good figures in comparison to the ion gel technique. So we are also working in order to, to improve the, 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 the electrical gating capabilities with respect to this ion gel thing, right? And finally, uh, I can be also quite quick, thermo-optic effect. This, this is an example, uh, again, is a work uh, done on a thick under supervision of Romain Kidan in, in this case. Here, what we did is the combination of a regular silicon lens with a thermo-optic lens. And probably the challenge in this world was the, the stacking, the, uh, the, the stacking and the position of the of both, of both lenses, right? So again, you can see the details on the on the paper. Uh, the good thing of this approach is that the limit of the performance is it comes with the meta surfaces. You are able to fabricate a high numerical aperture meta lens or a short or length. A meta lens, then the thermo optic lens can 
can be can uh, can be flexible to 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 operate in a, in a similar range, and this is because it, the, in in the case of the of this lens, this is a divergent lens, so it is always able to tune in this 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 distance. You are always able to 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 combine the the the, the focus or to tune the focus of the meta lens in a in a uh, in a in a in an easy way, right? So how to to improve the, this approach? In principle, this is also a successful approach, I would say. But the stacking uh, or the fabrication of this kind of structure of the structures sometimes it's 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 uh, it's not convenient for 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 fabrication of devices. So we thought that maybe we can do all together using spin crossover materials again. We play a bit in the clean room, so we pattern this, which looks like a metal lens, but still is not a metal lens. Uh, if you look in the SEM, you see that um, the fabrication process is still, I mean, we can we can still improve this. And the problem with lenses is that these structures presents, I mean, a, a low reflective index. So yeah. Uh, it's very hard to ma to make an efficient resonator like this. So most of the lens, even you can kind of control the the phase. Most most of the light, it's because it's almost transparent. Most of the light is not affected by this thing, phase contrast. So we look in literature and we found this solution. Uh, it's a work done at the group of Federico Capasso uh, with Titania, which also presents. Uh, better refractive index uh, than us, but still uh, around two, and is based in a wide guiding effect instead of using the, the the resonators. So we make some numericals on this, and we discovered that more or less, yes, we can tune the phase from zero to two pi, and uh, also with good response in transmissivity. But if you have a look here to the diameters, we are playing with pillars, which are, let's say, quite big in diameter. So this limits the pitch period and also the numerical aperture of the lens that you want to fabricate. So uh, yes, uh, because we are not very not, we are not very good doing this kind of simulation. We are looking for collaboration for this kind of of tasks. So if you are interested on. On, on working on, on, on this kind of development, we are we are open to, to this possibility, of course. And that was more or less all. Um, I just want to conclude to sum up everything. Basically, the, the idea that I wanted to communicate is that we can improve multifunctionality of metal lenses using molecular components. The three examples I show, first it's the designs of, of metal lenses for characterization of, of ultra thin film, of spin crossover materials in this case. We are also exploring new tuning possibilities as for example, alternatives to the electrical doping done, done, done usually with ion gel. And we are developing also molecular materials for the design of be stable metal lenses or mm, meta surfaces in general. In further, in further words, I would like to show because these are we just have pre preliminary results on this how to enable interaction between optical and, mag and magnetic uh, constituents. This can be done if we use a, 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 a magnetoplasmonic metasurface. And we are also including in the system the exotic response of, of particular 2D materials that, that we have in, uh, in house. And so this is everything, just to give thanks to everybody, the people that contributed with the metal and things and that give me uh, a very nice training at ICFO and also the people who is, uh, who is supporting me in this new stage at the University of Valencia. And of course, uh, thank you all of you for, for your attention. Thank you, thank you very much, Dr. Joseph per uh, Kenneth Ferrer. So the floor is open for questions from the audience. If if you don't, if people don't have a question, I have one in the same in the in the topic of meta lenses you mentioned in your last uh, um, slides, are these uh, meta lenses in which wavelength or in which range of frequencies? 
it, if you we are speaking about the yeah I, I believe the numericals are done for for the visible for blue red and green light right but in principle uh, we believe this is a possibility that we are not ex exploding because we have not facilities for measuring the in the mid or in the or, or in the near infrared but we believe that they should work better in in this range also because of that because we are with this material you i mean there is not a problem of making a high aspect ratio nanostructure in the principle the problem is that because of the low refractive index uh, the diameters we are man managing okay maybe there is a better solution but the, the diameters that we are managing are, 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 are so big so if we are working with let's say let's say higher wavelengths in principle would be less demanding uh, for this parameter in particular well, very interesting, very interesting, and thank you very much. Uh, a lot of interesting work you are doing there in, in Valencia. Thank you very much. Thanks.